I'm writing this as I stand in front of my bathroom sink full of rags, stained with my own blood. I'm staring at them, thinking about how wrong everything feels right now. It truly disturbs me that I've lost faith in my own child. Since the first day she learned to walk, she's been sneaking into my room at night, climbing into the bed and trying to discreetly nestle herself in between my wife and I. She knew that if we caught her, one of us would carry her crying back to her room where she'd be laid down and told to sleep in her own bed. It was all a part of the training process. I thought you were supposed to be a big girl, we would say to her as her large brown eyes stared up at us in the dark, tears catching the moonlight coming in from the window for extra dramatic flair. She was always such an actress, playing off our emotions from day one. No one ever believed me when I'd make claims about her, the baby knowing more than she let on. But I knew her game. We always kept the door unlocked anyway. I couldn't stand the idea of her trying to get in and being locked out in the dark. Just about every night, I'd wake up and see her puffy hair bobbing up and down, silhouetted against the walls thanks to the dim nightlight we plugged in at night. She would still come in without it, but it just didn't feel right making her find her way in pitch black. She lazily stumbled past the foot of my bed and over to her mother's side, struggling to maintain her balance through the haze of half-sleep. Her gant was distinct and recognizable, even in the dark. I'd wait for a few moments for her to climb her way up the side of the bed, using her large head as a counterbalance, and pulling on the sheets before lumbering her way over my wife's unconscious body. Each time, I was amazed my wife could sleep through such a drunken assault. I'm too much of a light sleeper for her to slip past me, and that usually means I have to carry her back, convince her to be a big girl, and sleep by herself. I could never quite decide whether I was annoyed or smitten with her behavior. You are probably thinking, the kid sounds adorable, what's the problem? Let me explain the layout of the room. It's very important you understand before I continue. My wife and I sleep back to back on a king-sized bed. Plenty of room for two adults and a three-year-old to fit. We almost always gravitate towards separate ends of the bed, leaving a convenient space for our daughter to steal like a thief in the night. There is a nightstand next to my wife's side of the bed, and on top of that is the baby monitor we use to keep an eye on our daughter. Usually the sound of her door opening plays through the monitor's speakers and wakes me up. I lean over to reach past my wife and turn on the monitor's display. If I see an empty bed with nothing but a lonely stuffed unicorn on it, I know to expect my little girl cracking my door open and hobbling in. The nightlight we use is plugged into a socket in the hall, just inside the doorway, and the hall opens up to where our bed is. So, to recap, the path my daughter takes starts at the bedroom door with a nightlight next to it, then into the hallway, passes me on my bed, my wife, and finally the nightstand with the baby monitor. Now, last night... I woke up to the sound of my bedroom door creaking open. I wasn't sure how I didn't hear her opening her own door. I just assumed I was in a deeper sleep than normal. My eyes squinted as I forced them to adjust to the extremely low light. Before I could focus on anything, the nightlight shut off abruptly. I didn't hear it get unplugged, but I figured she must have knocked it out of the wall in her drunken state. I could barely make out a dark shadow crossing the foot of my bed, but something was off about it. It seemed significantly taller than my daughter, 
and its movement was much more controlled, much smoother. It looked hunched over, and there was an eerie glide to how it transitioned from one side of the bed to the other. I felt the mattress shift more than usual, as I realized that whatever was climbing into bed with my wife and I could not possibly be my daughter. It carefully placed long, pointed limbs on the bed's surface, navigating itself over my wife and into the space between us. My back was turned to it, so I had to imagine what it looked like. Its appendages pressed deep, narrow depressions into the mattress, as if each one was more like a narrow cylinder rather than normal arms and legs. It let out a soft hissing noise and shuddered with a stomach-turning vibration as it settled down and came to rest. It weighed down so much on the bed that I had to quietly readjust myself to avoid rolling back onto it. Before I could catch myself, I felt a soft, fleshy impact on my back, which was followed by a sickening, gelatinous jerking motion from the creature. I shut my eyes instinctively out of sheer desperation, wanting to make sure I didn't get a glimpse of the thing in my bed. My mind raced as I tried to figure out my next move. The baby monitor was on my wife's side, so I couldn't check it without reaching over the creature. I didn't want to take the chance of agitating it. Whatever it was, it gave me the sense that it should not in any way be disturbed or confronted. It made me feel impotent and cowardly, like I was totally at the mercy of this shadowy child-sized creature. So was my family, and there was absolutely nothing I could do. I stayed awake for hours, sweating and pretending to be asleep. At times, I shut my eyes tightly, trying to will myself into unconsciousness, just to get away from the maddening reality of that night. At some point, I was able to fall asleep. I have no idea when, as I was too afraid to even turn my head to see the clock. When I woke up, I was completely exhausted. I felt like I hadn't slept in days. My head and heart were pounding at random intervals, and my clothes were soaked through with sweat. I also reeked of what seemed to be the smell of pine needles and dirt. My wife had already left for work, so I leaned over and turned on the baby monitor. If you're not a parent or caretaker of children, you may not know this, but many baby monitors show a residual image when you turn them on. The first thing that popped up was a picture of my daughter standing up in her bed, looking directly away from the camera. I could tell it was captured at some point during the night because it was in infrared. The oddest thing was that in the split second the image was up, her head appeared to be almost blacked out entirely. The image quickly updated, showing her in her bed, sound asleep. I was so out of it, I simply got up and dragged myself toward the bathroom for a much needed ice cold shower. I walked past the entrance door and saw the nightlight was still plugged in. The bathroom door creaked as I sluggishly walked in. I peeled off my sweaty clothes and left them in a pile near the tub. I cringed when I saw the back of my shirt was speckled with blood and smeared with what looked like dark brown mud, which seemed to be the source of my strong odor. As I turned on the shower, I felt a stinging pain on the skin of my lower back, right where I bumped into the thing that was in my bed. I strained to turn around to see what was there, and saw hundreds of tiny beads of blood and pus scattered across a large red rash. I wiped a towel over it to sop up the fluids, and a new wave of burning pain shot through me. I backed up to sit on the counter as I doubled over from the pain. I looked at my back in the mirror, and upon close inspection of the rash, I could see tiny, black, hair-like filaments all over the surface. The pain was so intense that I had to call out sick from work 
and spent over an hour plucking each fiber out with tweezers. The hairs were so deeply embedded in my skin, it made me sick. When my daughter finally woke up and came into my room, I suddenly felt claustrophobic and short of breath, even though she appeared to be completely normal. I immediately got a bad feeling about her. Maybe it was the stress and the fear from last night, but all I could think about was the fact that I was unable to tell where she was that whole time. She's been looking at me funny all day, being less affectionate, and not wanting to play or cuddle like she always did, like she's trying to figure me out. Before, she always used to peek at me out of the corner of her eye, that adorable grin on her face, waiting for me to look back and catch her while she let out the occasional subdued giggle of anticipation. It was so sweet back then. Now, her shifty glances just make me uneasy, suspicious. Her childlike charm and loveliness has simply faded away overnight. My heart sank when I felt myself seriously wondering if she was the thing that crawled into my bed last night. I've spent the last hour contemplating whether my daughter is secretly some kind of monster. It's almost like she knows what I'm thinking somehow. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but I can see it in her eyes. All that's left in my mind is doubt. This itch that tells me that my daughter is not who or what I thought she was. I can't get the idea out of my head. I think I'll have to lock my door from now on.